Hey there YouTube, what is going on? My name is Austin Zayback, and in this video, I'm gonna talk to you about the five most creative businesses that you can start in 2020. So these are probably not things you would go out tomorrow and quit your full-time job and just go all in, literally diving headfirst into the pool of just like not knowing exactly what it is that you're doing, but rather these are things that you could implement right here today and you can ultimately start them on the side, but then in a very short amount of time, it could potentially even become a full-time gig. And just for the record, these are my five, okay? Again, that is my five of the most creative businesses that I think you could start in 2020. I know there's a bunch of other YouTubers out there talking about all kinds of different businesses. I wanted to make a video as well because I feel like I have five in particular that are different from the rest of the people out there on YouTube. So if you have not already, go ahead and smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm gonna be on my computer a little bit, but I'm gonna show you right here and right now how you can make it happen. Okay, business number one is compilation videos. Now, you're probably wondering right now, Austin, what in the world is a compilation video? Let me ask you a question first though, and that is, are you somebody that is like not necessarily that comfortable with sitting in front of the camera? Like how I'm sitting here right now with you, are you somebody that maybe you wouldn't do this? If that is you, then this first business idea of 2020 is going to be the one for you. This is essentially a way for you to get on YouTube immediately and start posting YouTube videos right here without actually ever having to get in front of the camera. All right, a couple of different niches that you could think about are top 10 videos, okay? Now, what is a top 10 video? I'm gonna show you exactly what a top 10 video is, but essentially, top 10 funniest fails, uh, top 10 Fortnite snipes, okay? There's like a lot of that, by the way. Top 10 Fortnite snipes, okay? Uh, you can literally watch all of the Fortnite people get sniped on here. And I'm a Call of Duty guy. I'm not a big Fortnite guy. I know Call of Duty is like super old school. If you're watching this right now, you're like, Austin, you're absolutely insane. But I'm a Call of Duty guy. And we used to do like no scope snipes. Okay, if you have any idea uh, about video games, then maybe you can do that in Fortnite as well. I don't know. But what I do know is that you can make compilation videos on YouTube. You can actually make a lot of freaking money. Okay, on the topic of making compilation videos on YouTube, I wanna show you something really quick here. And that is if you go right into the search bar and, uh, and you go ahead and click the little filter button, you're gonna find a section called Creative Commons. If you're watching this in a time remotely close to when I'm making the video, then you will see a ton of top 10 videos on here. A lot of them are actually Fortnite, believe it or not, but essentially what Creative Commons is, is it's a bunch of content um, of people that are actually making a bunch of the regurgitated content, like the compilation content, like what I'm talking about right now. Like you're not gonna get a copyright claim or anything like that from using the Creative Commons footage. Now, there are some other things for you to look into as well as it pertains to the compilation footage, because I do know that if you keep it under a certain amount of time and you kind of mumble and jumble a bunch of other people's content together and you add your own, like let's just say voiceover or whatever it is, is, then it is technically, to my knowledge, considered your content. Okay, so again, uh, look into that a little bit more, but I have a ton of buddies that do this, and I don't personally do it just because I don't have the time, okay? I wish I did have the time, to be totally honest with you, but I don't. But I do know this for sure, that this business idea can actually make you like a lot of freaking money, okay? So if you're watching this video, like, definitely check it out. I mean, I don't know about you, but I would freaking love to make like $10,000 a month. It's like literally six figures just from uploading YouTube videos, okay? And obviously just editing the videos and maybe doing a voiceover or, or whatever it is that you feel like you need to do to make it your own content, but leveraging other people's actual content. Which brings me to business number two in our creative business ideas for 2020, and that is the one and only, my personal favorite, the ATM business. I'm gonna show you a quick animation of how the ATM business works and then we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. All right, 
So if you got anything out of that animation, then now you know that ATMs are not just owned by banks. And if you haven't been already subscribed to me on YouTube, which I mean, you definitely should have already been subscribed to me on YouTube, and then you would have known that ATMs weren't owned by banks because I've been talking about it for like three or four or five or even six months now. So if you haven't already, smash the subscribe button. And yes, there's over 425 thousand privately owned ATMs in the United States. So that means literally people like you and me actually own these ATMs. And again, if you've been watching me on YouTube or on Instagram or basically any other social media platform out there, then you would know that we actually have been acquiring ATMs for like the last year and um, is a phenomenal business to get involved in where you literally have the upside to make as much passive or residual income as you could possibly want. Which is pretty crazy to think about it because there's really not a lot of business ideas in 2020 where it's like technically like true passive income. I mean, if you think about it, most of the business ideas that people are talking about are like kind of passive, but kind of not passive, or they're like not passive at all. And you've got to like go out and like trade time for money. And um, essentially the ATM business, okay, is not one of those businesses. Like it's actually passive income. And again, if you go watch a couple of my videos on it, you will find out for yourself how you can literally generate anywhere from like two to $500 a month per ATM that you own. So if you haven't checked that out and you're about to click off the video because you're freaking bored, your dinner's about to be ready, your breakfast's about to be ready, or you gotta run out of the door, then at least go ahead and check out this video right here, okay? And in that video, I'm gonna be talking about how you can generate anywhere from two to $500 a month in passive income with the ATM business. So again, just to summarize, number two up, essentially you're buying an ATM or you can actually uh, get an ATM through a number of different ways, which again, I talk about in this video right here. But, um, but again, you can get an ATM and you can actually make passive income by essentially loaning your money. You're like a bank, but you're not really loaning it. You're technically like selling your money to them, I guess, in a way. I mean, again, if you watch the animation, you'll kind of understand, okay? But, uh, but again, you're, you're giving them money technically your money um, at, at ease, right? You're giving it to them uh, in the barbershop or in the nail salon or in the bar or wherever it is that you have an ATM and you're charging them uh, to actually use, again, but not use, but buy your money um, and not have to actually go to the actual bank where the actual ATM is because maybe that is a mile or two or five or 10 down the road and um, well, I mean, again, your ATM is just way more convenient. That's all I'm gonna talk about on the ATM business for this video though. Uh, again, if you have any interest whatsoever in that business, uh, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal business to be a part of. So definitely just subscribe. And again, we'll talk about it a lot on the channel and uh, I'd be happy to go deeper into that business model. All right, creative business idea number three in 2020, and that is to run Facebook and Instagram ads to your mom and pop shops in your local neighborhood. Now, what you really wanna do here is you wanna focus in on your target audience of the ideal client that you're actually looking for when getting involved in the business. And of course, you have like SMMA by Ty Lopez, which is like pretty much everywhere at this point. And that was where Ty Lopez essentially went on a rampage and taught everybody in the world how to do SMMA, which again, stands for a social media marketing agency. And I know that I did one, and if I did one, well, I can imagine that you did one. And if you didn't do one, you probably thought about doing one. But here's the deal. Uh, starting a Facebook or Instagram ads agency is actually a really good idea in 2020. And a lot of the people that tried to get into SMMA uh, didn't exactly make millions of dollars like they thought they would. And the ones that are making millions of dollars today um, do provide a pretty viable product or service to the actual consumer, which is what I'm telling you to do right here, except for you're just gonna start small, right? You're not gonna be this big time um, agency, okay? You're gonna start just you, and you're going to actually learn how to do it, okay? There's a million videos out there um, on how you can learn how to do this, okay? So learn how to run ads, learn how to do it for your niche, and then go out and get a couple of clients, okay? Again, this is a very, very, very simple way to go out and actually learn Facebook and Instagram ads and charge a premium every single month. 
Again, you need to remember that most of your mom and pop shops, okay, in your local area, um, they, they, they just don't know what they're doing, okay? Like, if anything, what you're doing is you're providing time, right? You're providing them with the ability to do things that they're good at so that you can do things that you're good at, right? You know, again, let's just say you have a restaurant in your local neighborhood. The restaurant owner is probably running a million miles an hour to do what they need to do to keep the restaurant open, right? Working 50 or 60 or 70 hours a week. And the last thing that they have time to do is to run Facebook or Instagram ads. Basically, you're just going to put them on a retainer and you're going to make money. Pretty much day one on this is actually very, very, very simple. And there's a couple of ways that you can do it. You can either charge them for additional, like an additional amount of money. So let's say like you're going to spend a thousand dollars on actual ad spend. You could charge them like 1500 to $2,000 and the difference is actually profit to you. Or you can just charge them for their ad spend and then charge them a separate fee for you to manage everything. So it just depends on like how you want to structure it. And we probably save that for another video. But again, this is a phenomenal business that you can get involved in in 2020, like pretty much like that. I mean, there, there's not a lot of work involved. I mean, like, Again, you've got to learn some stuff and you've got to have some specialized knowledge, but it isn't anything crazy, right? It isn't anything any more than any other industry that you would essentially click off of this video to go learn. I mean, whether that be Shopify or Amazon FBA or real estate or wholesaling or whatever it is, okay? Again, um, it, it is a very, very simple way for you to make a, a pretty significant amount of money and I encourage you to go out and learn the business model. Not only that, if you ever have a book or a podcast or pretty much anything that you ever want to do for the rest of your life or any business or merch or whatever, you're going to need to know how to run ads, okay? Facebook and Instagram primarily. So why not learn how to do it for other people so that eventually you can do it for yourself? Creative business idea number four is to get into the wholesaling business. Now, if this is your first time to my channel, you're probably like, what in the world is the wholesaling business, Austin? I've never heard of that. I don't follow Max Maxwell. I don't follow anybody else is really big on social media in regards to the wholesaling business. And obviously you haven't subscribed to me already, so you have no idea what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the most easy form of real estate. Okay, I shouldn't say easy, but the most simple form of real estate that you'll ever do. And that is wholesaling real estate, which is essentially just flipping the contract. You're like, Austin, I can invest into real estate without ever investing into real estate. The answer is, yeah, you, you absolutely can. As a matter of fact, and, um, it's 2020. I mean, don't you want to learn how to flip the paperwork and say that you're a real estate investor? All right. I'm just playing around. You do have to do this morally. You do have to do it ethically. Okay. It is a phenomenal business for you to get involved in. But again, You've got to do it the right way, okay? Just like any other business, you have to do it the right way. But essentially, yes, wholesaling real estate is where you just find a property at a discount with the seller because the seller needs to sell. For whatever reason, maybe it is a divorce, maybe it's a probate, maybe the, it needs remodeled and they've got to update it. You know, whatever the reason is, right? Maybe the, the house is half burned down, it's a fire damage or a water damage or whatever the case is. They might even be going into foreclosure, they lost their job, whatever, right? The seller needs to sell the property, okay? And uh, essentially all you do is you actually go and you get that property under contract with the seller, okay? You're the buyer. And, uh, and during your inspection period, you take that contract and you find a buyer for the contract, okay? Um, so maybe let's just say you have it under contract with the seller for $100,000. You would go find a buyer for $105,000 and you would make $5,000, okay? The difference in between the 100 and 105, and that would be what you would call your wholesale profit or your assignment fee or your double escrow fee, okay? It is a very simple business model um, on the surface level. Obviously, you've got to figure out how at scale you can go find motivated sellers, okay? Um, but it is 100% doable. It's a very doable business model. As a matter of fact, I've been doing it for about five or six, maybe even going on seven years, I think, right now. And um, and again, I'm not an extremely intelligent guy, right? I, I grew up in a normal household. You know, I was a pretty normal guy, okay? If anything, I, I would have been uh, probably below normal, okay? Uh, I didn't get that good of grades, grades in school. And 
you know, I, I really, you know, I worked really hard, right, to get to where I'm at. And, and I, honestly, in my opinion, I still don't think that I've done a whole lot. But what you have to remember is wholesaling was one of those first businesses that I ever got started in. And, um, you know, like, like I said, I mean, it, it isn't like I came out of some Ivy League college with, with some fancy degree and just became a millionaire. It took a, a lot of years uh, of sacrifice to get to where I'm at. Okay, so understand if you're watching this video, then it look, if I can do any of these businesses so can you. Business idea number five is to smash the subscribe button so you can come back to my next business idea video because when I started to film the video, I thought that I had five business ideas, but I actually only have four business ideas, okay? So business idea number five is to follow me, to subscribe, and, uh, and I'll make another video with another round or another set or different business ideas that you can get started uh, in 2020. Okay, maybe the, the second half of the year, or maybe I'll go into a little bit more detail um, or, or something of the nature, okay? So uh, I really appreciate you watching the video and I hope that you got something from one of these business ideas, something that you can take away um, and actually implement right away. I mean, at the end of the day, these are business ideas that shouldn't take a long time to get started, right? You, you should essentially be able to, like right after the video, like like literally pick a business idea and actually apply it to your life, okay? And again, none of these business ideas like will take all of your time. And, and again, I don't recommend that you go quit your nine to five day job to start one of the business ideas like tomorrow, okay? I would, I would kind of work it on the side for a little while, work it into your life, make money with it, and then eventually, if you get to a, po a point or a place where your one of the businesses is actually exceeding your income at your normal nine to five job, then you, you could potentially consider actually going full time in one of the businesses. Okay, so drop in the comment section down below what you would like to see in a future video. Smash that like button and I look forward to seeing you there.